Have you heard of the genitourinary syndrome of menopause or GSM for short? Today we're going to talk about this syndrome and some of the most common pelvic health issues that women face during a menopause. Menopause is the one year anniversary of 12 consecutive months of no periods. Genitourinary syndrome of menopause, or GSM for short, describes the multiple changes that occur in the external genitalia, the pelvic floor tissue, the bladder, and the urethra, as well as the loss of sexual function and libido that results from the decline of estrogen that goes along with menopause. Symptoms of GSM include bladder leakage, pelvic organ prolapse, pelvic pain, loss of libido, changes in sexual function, pain with sex, urinary tract infections, vaginal atrophy, and vaginal dryness, just to name a few. The three most common pelvic health issues that women experience during menopause are bladder leakage, pelvic organ prolapse, and pelvic pain. So we're going to talk a little bit about each one of those. Bladder leakage does get more common as we age, but bladder leakage is not a normal part of aging. 30 to 40% of women will experience bladder leakage at some point in their life, but the good news is we are not all marching back down the path to diapers. There are things that we can do to prevent leakage from ever starting, as well as to fix it if you are already experiencing it. One of the main things is making sure that your pelvic floor muscles and the core muscles around the pelvic area are all working well together. If we don't use it, we lose it. And so over time, these muscles can start to get weak and not work as well, especially if we haven't been using them actively throughout our life. And then we throw the menopausal changes of decreased estrogen on top of that, and these tissues start to get a little bit more frail, the muscles aren't as strong, and this can all lead to leakage happening, especially later on, especially after we've gone through menopause. But again, this is not inevitable, and there are things women can do to help make sure that their muscles stay strong, supportive, and supple, and they don't end up with bladder leakage as they age. Pelvic organ prolapse is another common pelvic health issue that happens with GSM. Up to 50% of women may experience pelvic organ prolapse at some point in their life, especially if they have delivered children. Pelvic organ prolapse is when one of the pelvic organs starts to tip into the vaginal canal. So the bladder can tip back into the canal, the rectum can tip forward, the uterus can start to drop down. All of these different things can end up causing a variety of symptoms. These symptoms can include heaviness, pressure, fullness, seeing a bulge in the vaginal canal, change in bowel or bladder habits. It could be difficulty having a bowel movement now, feeling like you're unable to empty all the way. It can be the start of having some bladder leakage. You might also experience pain or discomfort in the area with insertion or simply with, um, at the end of the day, with increased activity. So there's a whole host of symptoms that go along with pelvic organ prolapse. And again, the tissues, um, as we hit that menopausal age and our estrogen content gets lower, our tissues are not as supple and not as supportive as they used to be. But we can kind of compensate for this by making sure that we are nice and strong and supportive ahead of time um, and or building it back up if we've already experienced some of this weakness. So if you're experiencing these symptoms, it's not a lifetime sentence of, dealing with issues, there are things you can do to help minimize the symptoms and improve the prolapse so that you're not left dealing with feeling like you can't be active or moving around the way you want to be because of this discomfort. The third most common issue that women experience with GSM is some type of pelvic pain. Now, pelvic pain is a very global term that can include pain anywhere from below the belly button to above the thighs. Most commonly, women are experiencing pain um, kind of around the pubic area or in the vaginal canal or in the labia or external uh, genitalia. Uh, it can be in the tailbone or the rectum area. So kind of anywhere throughout that, um, that pelvic area, 
uh, falls under that umbrella of pelvic pain. Most commonly with uh, GSM, it's oftentimes pain with intercourse. So that vaginal pain or pain at the entrance with insertion um, is very common with many women stating that it feels like sandpaper, everything feels so dry. It's just really uncomfortable to try and insert anything into the vaginal canal. Um, so again, with the loss of estrogen, um, the tissue, we start to get some vaginal atrophy and we start to uh, get vaginal dryness. So if pain with intercourse is something that people are experiencing, one of the first things they can do is to make sure that they're using proper lubrication when they attempt intercourse to help kind of diminish the friction and make the tissues kind of slide more easily. Then it's also important to think about it uh, throughout the day that, that having those tissues be moisturized. So using a type of vaginal moisturizer that includes a hyaluronic acid can be very helpful um, to make sure that those tissues are staying nice and uh, supple and you know have good flexibility. So those are two things that you can do to start if you're experiencing kind of pain with intercourse. Uh, but yes, just know that pelvic pain is one of the most common symptoms, especially pain with sex. And it's not something you're stuck with. There's definitely things that you can do to make it feel better and go away. So we just discussed the three most common pelvic health issues that women experience with menopause. Pelvic pain, specifically pain with sex, bladder leakage, and pelvic organ prolapse. If you are experiencing any of these issues, know that you are not alone and that there are things you can do. One of the most beneficial things that you can do is to find a pelvic physical therapist in your area to partner with. We are experts in how we move and use the muscles in and around the pelvic area and can help you get symptom and pain free with your daily life and exercise and moving the way that you want to be moving all without having to worry with what's going on in the pelvic area. So just know that if you are suffering with any of these symptoms, you do not need to suffer alone. There are options for you to help get you back to doing what you want to be doing without having to worry about what's going on in the pelvic area. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you found it informative. We put out weekly content on pelvic health topics because we want people to be able to optimize their pelvic health throughout their lifetime. Make sure you like and subscribe our channel so that you're alerted when our next video becomes available.